Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about an interesting little handgun from the 1920s. It's called a Lignosa Einhand. It's a German pistol, and for the most part, it's really a pretty simple gun. It's it's your your typical vest pocket size 25 ACP hammer fired pistol, which were all the rage back in the 1920s and 30s. What makes this interesting, though, and you may already be looking at it, is this brass cocking piece right here. And if you speak German, you might have already guessed that the Einhand stands for one hand, and that's what this gun is about. You can cock it with one hand, just like that. It's actually pretty similar, the story is pretty similar to the uh, Holo Ad, which is another pistol I've talked about, which is a Spanish design, but basically this gun dates back a little bit earlier. Um, it was just a, a regular pocket pistol based on you know just a, a generic Browning design um, built in Germany by the Bergmann company. But this a Polish guy, he designed this piece separately, and the Berg, Bergmann company decided to put it on their line of pocket pistols, just to sort of set them apart, I think. Um, Bergman only made these for a couple years, and then they were eventually bought by a company called Lignosa, which was a, a holding company based in Berlin. And the rest of the, the years that these were manufactured, uh, about 1921 through 1939, they were manufactured by Lignosa. So they're a little bit more scarce with the uh, the Bergman um, marks on the grips and on the on the slide. Uh, the most common ones you're going to see are these Lignosas. There were actually a couple different models of the Einhand pistols. Um, this is this one is a 2A, it's called, and then there was also a 3A which had just a little bit, a little bit of a longer grip. Um, it seems like these 2As are easier to find. Overall, these guns are actually pretty hard to find for some reason, but the, the, the 2As seem to come up a little bit more often for sale. I've seen some. Um, there's one guy online that keeps track of all these guns, and he says the 3A is about as common as the 2A, but they do seem a little bit more rare. Um, so uh, this one here is a 2A, like I said. Um, going on to the appearance, they have a, all have a blue finish. If you ever see one with a nickel finish, that's incorrect. It was applied later have black plastic grips, um, and this cocking indicator is really the cool part. And I specifically sought one out in brass. I had one before this, which is actually in my shooting video, if you've seen that. Um, I was shooting my previous Lignosa, and that one just had a blued finish on the, the, on the cocking lever here. I think the brass looks a lot cooler. I've also seen a picture of one that actually had a, a nickel plated, or it was for some somehow it was made silver, this, this piece here, and it looked pretty sweet on the gun too. It was just a nice contrast. I just think the brass looks like it has a nice uh, pop to it against the blue finish of the gun. But, you know, otherwise, overall, what you're looking at is a pretty standard uh, 25 ACP pocket pistol from the era. I've also got a Colt 1908 to compare it to, which I'll do for a size comparison, too. Um, since they are about the same size, these Colts, I think, in my mind, are at least sort of the archetypal uh, pocket pistol from the day. And you can see the, the Lignosa is a little bit bigger, but they're roughly the same size. Lignosa weighs about 14 ounces. So it's a, it's a pretty handy little gun. It feels nice and solid for the most part. Um, slips into a pocket well and all that. I'll compare it with my Beretta like I always do. Just because that's probably one of my more common guns and uh, gives you a bit of a perspective on the size. So it is pretty small. It's a 25 ACP so it doesn't need to be big. And you know the Beretta is a big gun too. But that gives you some idea. Um, width wise, pretty narrow. You can see there there's also a cool looking uh, brass cocking indicator. Right now the gun is cocked, nothing in it of course, but um, this is poking out and you can tell that it's cocked that way either by touch or just by looking at it. As far as features goes, apart from the uh, cocking lever here, there's also a safety. As if the gun wouldn't be safe enough without a round in the chamber, you can also put the safety on and uh, carry it that way for extra safety. Um, the sights are basically non-existent, which was common with these little pocket guns. I mean, I'm trying to focus on it, but I can barely even get it. I can, I really, when I shoot this thing, I can't even see the sights because they're so small. That arm's length. Uh, it's just a little trench here and a little tiny, barely visible raised uh, nub at the end of the barrel, or at the end of the slide. So, so if you're wondering what the actual purpose of this cocking lever is, the idea is that you can carry the gun without a round in the chamber. And what you do, you need to use it, is you pull it out, cock it with one hand, and... You'd see a round right there, let it go, and now you suddenly have a round chambered. It's accurate enough uh, that this Colt 1908, I shoot that decently, you know, as decently as you can with these tiny little sights. You know, I can hit a soda can at five or seven yards or something like that pretty uh, pretty regularly, but you're not going to shoot these things for groups. You Really, it's more of a, a gut gun. You point and shoot. Um, but, you know, you can't really ask for a whole lot of accuracy out of these, but it's fun enough to shoot. As far as reliability goes, this one I've had a lot of good luck with. It hasn't really jammed up on me or anything. If you watch my video of the other one that I had, though, it did seem to stovepipe a couple of times. Um, and It wasn't frequent, but of course it happened while I was filming. But um, overall, I think these guns are pretty reliable for what they are.
and uh, I'll show you the trigger pull too, like I always do. Um, oh, forgot to mention the mag release is on the bottom, as was typical of European guns back then. Um, so like I said, the gun is already cocked, and I'll show you the trigger pull. It's not great. It's kind of heavy. Not not a great feeling trigger either. Hip, heavy, heavy, heavy. And uh, cock it again. See how cool that is? And it's pretty heavy. I would say it might be 9 pounds. And uh, not the best trigger in the world. But with these little guns, you know, it was all about safety. You need to have a good, solid trigger pull so it's not going off in your pocket. Um, as far as uh, criticisms go, I usually have a section on that. Don't really have a lot of criticisms about these. You know, there's another one of those kind of weird arcane guns that uh, it kind of is what it is. Um, it does rattle a bit, which I don't like. That, uh, that cocking piece up here, it's not a very tight fit. But apart from that, you know, it's, it's just a basic run-of-the-mill pocket pistol from the day. It has a good solid feeling apart from the, the rattliness of this cocking lever here. If you're interested in finding one of these, uh, I wish you luck. They're, for some reason, pretty hard to find, and when they do pop up, you never know what the price is going to be. I saw one go for sale recently for over $1,000. It was in pretty good shape. A lot of these are actually pretty beat up. Um, I think just these sorts of pocket pistols, people just didn't care about them over the years, and they get mashed up. This brass is going to be a soft metal, so sometimes you see that bent out of shape. This is the shape that it should have. I've seen some that are kind of more straightened or just have weird goofball angles and things, but should have a nice graceful um, sort of groove there for your finger to grab into. You know, they're just they're hard to find in good condition. And when you do, I think they can get kind of expensive. I think at a minimum you're looking at six, seven hundred dollars probably for a good Lignosa. And uh, a lot of it just depends on how long it's been since one's been for sale, if a collector sees it, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, it's a cool little pistol. You don't see a lot of them out there, obviously. And if you haven't already noticed, this this uh, cocking piece up here is not attached to the slide in any way. Um, so you can pull the rack the slide like you normally would, and the cocking piece stays there, which is what happens when you fire it, of course. This goes back and the, the cocking piece stays here, ready for you to, to use it on some scallywag you run into in 1920s Germany. So, cool gun. I think they're interesting mostly for this cocking piece, which is a sort of a unique design you don't ever see on anything except for that Hoload, which I also pulled out. If you remember, it has a palanca, which is a similar concept. You can pull the lever back and it cocks the gun. There's also a Chinese gun that's uh, got a similar sort of design to it, but it's illegal to import Chinese weapons in the United States, so you won't find that. Um, but yeah, it's a cool gun. Lignosa Einhand. Made in Germany, 1920s, 1930s. If you see one with the Berkmann uh, logo on it, that's one of the earlier ones. And uh, these brass ones, too. This brass, that was the earlier model. Later on, they, they went to blue, and I don't think they look as good. But And pretty cool. So thanks for watching.